In this video we're going to be talking about our CNC mill and specifically we're going to be on the topic of how to home it correctly. So I've had a user ask a question on my previous video just wanting a bit more information on the homing process as he or she finds it a little bit confusing. And don't worry, you're not the only one when you're getting into the world of CNC operations. The learning curve is quite steep and no doubt there's going to be a catch-22 somewhere along the way. So hopefully this video does a good job of explaining the homing process in detail. Hope you enjoy it. Now before we get too far into the subject of homing our CNC mill, we need to verify that we do have our stepper motors moving in the right direction when we tell them to. In other words, they're not reversed. So, how do we tell that? Well, when we tell the machine to home, to its home position, we should have the spindle end up in a left-hand corner with the Z-axis elevated to its maximum height. If we have the Z-axis on the bed, or perhaps in a right-hand corner, we're doing it wrong. And that's where either changing um, garble software so that you can, you can reverse the direction of the motor rotation or you can flip the connections on the motor around. Um, either way will result in the access, uh, axis rather travelling in the opposite direction. So in order for us to home our machine we can use this button right here, dollar sign H. I'm just going to click that. So we see the machine elevate the z-axis to the top, hits the switch, drops down 5mm and then comes back for a second precision tap on the switch. Once the z-axis is elevated all the way it can then uh, home the x and y axis. So now we've got our machine homed and it's in a left hand corner with the z-axis elevated to the top we know that our machine is calibrated and working just fine. Now, now we can move on to talking about the two types of homes that a CNC mill has. One is the machine's physical home, which is the state it is in right now, and the second home is your workpiece or the stock you're milling from's home. And that's what we're going to move on to now. So let's pretend this piece of MDF is the stock we're milling from. Now, when we're using our CAM software to generate the G-code, um, which you can check out and I'll link up in the video's corner here, with some software we can choose where the material, workpiece or stock's home position is. Some are fixed. Um, so here we've got the two most common options. We've got bottom left corner is home, much like our machine, and also the centre of the workpiece. So, what we'd do is we'd establish uh, what home position the CAM software we're using uses, or if we've got a choice, choose whatever works best for you. We would then come along and bolt our workpiece down to our CNC mill. And now what we have to do is home the tip of the milling bit to the appropriate home position. So generally, I use the centre of the workpiece but really there's no advantage or disadvantage to having it from the bottom left corner or any other corner. So now I'm going to move my machine, machine using the uh, controls, the manual controls found in Universal G-Code Sender to slowly creep the bit onto the centre of our workpiece. So now we can use our controls over here to move the axes around to find our workpiece home position. Now do be careful when you're using this. Many a time I've lost track of what button I'm clicking on um, just by having a glance at it instead of looking at it properly and you end up crashing your milling bit into the bed or something nasty. So we're basically we can enter in how many millimetres of travel we want and then creep up on our uh, workpiece home position we've got marked on the bench there um, until we've got the bit sitting right on top of the X. So what we're after is for the milling bit to ever so slightly touch the top of our stock we're going to mill from in our chosen workpiece home position. And now that we have our milling bit sitting on top of our workpiece home position, we're going to hit reset zero 
we can see the work position has completely zeroed. So now that we have our workpiece home position zeroed, what I like to do is raise the spindle above the workpiece by 3mm. And in my case, because I'm using manual control of the spindle, um, I would turn on my spindle and then I can send the G-code file to start our milling process. So that about wraps it up for this video. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button, it would be much appreciated. And also, if you want to learn more about CNC mills, there's plenty of stuff on my channel, including how to construct them. And if you love this video, please consider subscribing, because there will be plenty more in the future to come. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.